Turning to the public health impact of the virus outbreak, as the WHO declares a pandemic, the tide appears to be turning in the city where it began. China says it will close all temporary hospitals in Wuhan as the number of patients continues to drop in the city. So far, China's the only one bearing the heaviest economic load from the outbreak. Millions of people are still under lockdown in their homes and many businesses remain closed. Dexter Roberts is a former China bureau chief at Business Week and author of The Myth of Chinese Capitalism. He is with me now. Um, this idea of the way China handled the virus, Everybody said it was strong, it was robust, it was draconian, but it was needed. Yeah, well, if you, you look sort of at the progression of what happened, initially, uh, there was an enormous mess up. There was a cover up by the Chinese government. Some doctors came forward with information about the virus. They were silenced. Uh, and because of that initial cover up, the disease spread to a degree that it wouldn't have. And, and frankly, people died. So initially, it was, it was not a very impressive performance at all. Do we believe the Chinese numbers when they say that things are getting better? It does seem to be actually the fact that right. things are getting better. And really, in the second stage, this uh, um, draconian measures that have been taken with the lockdowns, uh, with the quarantines of whole cities, as you mentioned, uh, shutting down transportation, ordering businesses to stop, that really seems to have slowed the spread of the virus. So this is really a two-stage response. The second part, rather impressive. Um, which, of course, has been followed by Italy in the sense of uh, the, the complete lockdown. You call your book the, the myth of Chinese capitalism. The Chinese like to... The Chinese still like to portray to the rest of the world that they are a capitalist country or a quasi-capitalist country uh, with market economics behind it. But you don't buy that. I do not. No, the, 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 the myth of my book is that China is becoming more capitalistic, that the reforms that did start and have been very real are continuing, and that uh, they will continue to grow their already very large middle class and continue to be a driver of global growth for uh, countries and for companies. I don't think that's happening anymore. If that doesn't happen in China, what does the country do? Uh, as uh, Xi has, has, has tightened his grip to where I don't think anybody denies now it's almost a, you know, I won't say dictatorship per se, but you know what I mean. It is, a, it is an authoritarian regime with its f uh, hands around the neck of, of the beast. Um, what sort of economics will it follow and, and corporate uh, structures? Well, they're in a very interesting position. It's probably the biggest, they're facing the biggest economic transition since Deng Xiaoping right. uh, in decades. The idea is they need to move from this factory of the world model that has driven this amazing growth for the last few decades to a much more uh, consumer-driven economy, a service-driven economy. And they do want to continue to manufacture, but they want automated factories. Wages have gone up. And they want to produce much uh, higher quality goods. The problem and the, another myth that I deal with in my book is the idea that they can actually make that move when about half the population, uh, migrants and farmers, are still treated as second-class citizens. Good to have you with us, sir. Thank you.